Item number, SCP-491. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. A one kilometer perimeter is to be maintained around SCP-491 at all times, for the purpose of preventing sea vessels access to the effects of SCP-491. Entrance is to be barred to all personnel with a security clearance below level two. Any intruders are to be questioned to ascertain their intent, then given Class B amnestics and released no less than 20 kilometers from SCP-491. Description SCP-491 is a lighthouse built in the early 20th century, located at Nova Scotia. The ocean floor surrounding SCP-491 contains numerous wrecked ships, which vary in time of origin, ranging from 1923 to 1987. The area within the perimeter of SCP-491 is subject to spontaneous change, caused by minor, magnitude of less than 3.5, earthquakes. The alterations caused to the topography of the seabed are greater than expected for earthquakes of these magnitudes. These earthquakes result in the production of large rocks or shallows in the path of an incoming vessel, inevitably sinking it. At random intervals, SCP-491's lamp will activate, producing a green light that rotates at six revolutions per minute. Any area of the surrounding sea illuminated by this light will evince several ships, identical to those present on the sea floor. These new ships retain the damage inflicted upon them and begin to take on water at a slower rate than non-anomalous counterparts. Displacement of water evidenced by testing has shown that these ships are physical in nature. These ships only last for a short period, time less than two seconds, due to the rate at which SCP-491's lamp rotates. The interior of SCP-491 shows no anomalous effects, and is typical of a lighthouse built in that era. The lamp room of SCP-491 contains a mesoradial Fresnel lens, lit by a Dallin light. Cutting off electrical power to the lamp has no effect on the activation of SCP-491. All attempts to contain the light produced by SCP-491 have failed. The light emitted by SCP-491 is independent of the state of the lamp room. Complete removal of lighting components did not prevent activation. Light emitted by SCP-491 can be influenced by sufficiently reflective surfaces, so long as the light reaches the sea. See Incident Log 49132 for details on attempts to focus SCP-491 into a continuous loop. Addendum 491-1 An interview with the former owner of SCP-491, Hannah, was discovered in the Nova Scotia archives by Agent who submitted it to the Foundation. Forward. The following transcript is an excerpt from a local news tribute conducted by Tyler Musuko for Hannah the former owner of the lighthouse. Commence transcript. Musuko. Today indeed marks a sad day for Just recently, a local hero, Hannah, passed away. A former sailor in Australia, the sinking of his ship on a reef forced him into early retirement. He moved from town to town, including Cape Elizabeth, before finally finding his home here in beautiful Nova Scotia. He will always be remembered for his valiant efforts in manning the lighthouse, saving countless ships, no matter the weather or the hour, from the treacherous seas surrounding him. He gave his life last week, diving into the frigid waters to save the crew of the SS Keller, endangered by the rocky seas. We will always remember his undying dedication and caring. Farewell, Mr. Hanna. Addendum 491-2 on 0325, Foundation personnel sent an unmanned small ship, the SS Griever, into the affected area. A large rock in the path of the SS Griever immediately burst out of the water, tearing a large gash along the side of the SS Griever, sinking it within two minutes. During the next green light event, the SS Griever manifested above the area of its wreck. Addendum 491-3 Audio Log 491-1 Forward Through the use of several mirrors, 
Foundation personnel were able to keep the light produced by SCP-491 focused at the wreckage of the SS Vancouver. The ship produced by SCP-491 was boarded by Foundation personnel. Commence audio log 491-1. Agent Johnston. Okay, we're on board. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about the ship. No water damage or warping. I'm no expert, but I'd say it's... 30s or 40s. Really large doors. Immigrant ship? 491 Command. Our records of the SS Vancouver confirm that. Attempt to proceed to the interior of the ship. Agent Johnston. Roger that. Agent Gold. These doors are jammed shut. I can't budge them. We're going to try the crowbar. No, it's not working. Agent Johnston. Try the jaws of life. At this point, several voices can be heard from within. Only one is discernible above the sound of rushing water. Unidentified voice. Give me that bucket. Agent Gold. We're inside the... Hold! Maintain distance! 491 Command. Agents, what is your status? Agent Johnston. Command. We have a potential biohazard. The hold is occupied by the former crew and passengers, by the appearance of their clothing. They're all undergoing various stages of decay, but they don't seem to be aware of it. Some of the crew are trying to repair the damage to the hull. The others are attempting to contain the passengers in the back. Unidentified voice. Oh, thank God. More help. Please, could you help us plug up these holes? Agent Johnston. The passengers have seen us. They're trying to push past the crew. One of the passengers just... Command, they've broken through. We're pulling back. Gold, move! Unidentified voice. What are you doing? We have to save this ship for fuck's sake! You, give me that pump! Get back here! There is no audible dialogue for a span of one minute. However, sounds of struggle are evident. Agent Johnston. Command, I'm on deck. Agent Gold just... All audio is drowned out by a screech that lasts for approximately 30 seconds. The screech can be heard without transceivers from 491 Command, and all radio transmissions were interrupted for the duration of the sound. Along with the screech, a 6.6 .6 magnitude level earthquake occurred, dislodging several mirrors focusing the light, which ceases to illuminate the SS Vancouver. Radio contact with Agents Johnston and Gold was lost, and they are presumed dead. Addendum 4914 Incident Report 4912 SCP Involved SCP-491 Personnel Involved SCP-491 Staff Agent Davis Date 0324 Location Nova Scotia Description Following the incident recorded in Audio Log 491, Foundation personnel were placed on high alert for the next green light event. Several radio devices set to different frequencies were all placed around the area, in hopes that more information would be transmitted by the lost agents, with no results. At 2 hours 32 minutes and 47 seconds in the AM, the following radio transmission was recorded at 160.3 MHz. Unidentified Voice Scotia, this is the SS Vancouver. All ship repairs have been completed. We are now docking to unload passengers and luggage. A series of mirrors was quickly constructed around the light, designed to allow the beam movement across the water. The beam's operator soon found the wreckage of the SS Vancouver. The manifestation was observed to be mobile, although no disturbances in the water were noted. The new SS Vancouver was tracked as it slowly approached a dock that had not previously manifested. The ship docked without incident, the crew successfully readying the ship for departure, despite decomposition. Following the crew members were a series of passengers appearing to be of Eastern European origin, experiencing the same level of decay as the crew. Passengers were seen stopping to talk to the crew members before picking up their luggage. Although the beam produced by the mirror system was not wide enough to capture all of the passengers, a procession could be seen moving along a flat area of ground towards the mainland. Upon leaving the half-kilometer radius, 
Illumination by SCP-491 ceased to reveal any passengers. Agents Johnston and Gold were identified amongst the passengers. Both agents were observed to be wearing their excursion gear, including radios. But all attempts to communicate via radio received no response, nor did they respond to visual and audio communication attempts. Agent Davis was instructed to attempt to make physical contact with Agents Gold and Johnston and attempt to retrieve them. Agent Davis made physical contact with Agent Gold at 100 hours 39 minutes, coinciding with an earthquake of 7.7 .7 magnitude, which damaged the mirrors and redirected the light. All passengers immediately vanished, along with the three agents. Further rescue attempts are currently suspended, pending review. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-490, Ice Cream Truck, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.